Hi and welcome to Daugavpils, the second largest city of Latvia. With 80,000 people, it may not be the largest city in the Baltics, but it has a tram system. So let's go and see what is going on there. For the history of the trams in Daugavpils, we go back to 1946, with the opening of the first route between the railway station and the old depot near Liepajas Iela. This route is currently part of the core section of the network. The network gradually extended up to 1977, with the completion of the section to Tsietoksnis. Up to very recently, nothing much changed, except for the tram types. And that is basically the main story of the history of the network, up until recently. You see, although the tram network has never seen a world war, the network has seen Latvia regaining its independence from the former USSR. But also, Daugavpils is slowly losing its population, ever since its independence. Therefore, I found it quite amazing that instead of disappearing, the decision was made to invest. So they renewed the fleet, reconstructed the network and rerouted some sections. Also, they added some switches in places where they would enable new connections. Besides that, the overhead wires were renewed, allowing for pantograph operation rather than trolley poles. This all took place over the last few years, which is really exciting and shows the interest of the city's leadership as well as the EU and Latvia's government in good public transport, no matter the size of your city. Which brings us to the network of today. This is the tram network of Daugavpils. It has a 1524mm gauge, which is the older version of Russian gauge. The network is estimated to be around 16 kilometers in total, but the total length of all the lines combined is around 27 kilometers. Besides that, the trams are powered by 600 volts DC overhead wires. The network has one depot in use, which is located at Butverova Iela. Although the older depot can be found along the 18th of November street. There you can also see this old tram, made by RVR, the former train and tram manufacturer of Riga. The turning loops are located at Sietoksnis, Stacia, Maises Kombinat, at the depot at Butcherova Iela, and finally at Stropi. Currently, the network is operated by four lines. Line 1, Stacia Butcherova Iela. Line 2, Maises Kombinat to Butcherova Iela. Line 3, Sietoksnis to Stropi. And finally, line 4, Stacia to Mises Kombinats. Line 1 is by far the most frequently operated line, with headways around 10 minutes. The line is using the full core section between Stacia and Butcherova Iela. This section is also entirely double track. But, given that Daugavpils is not the largest of cities and frequencies do not have to be that high, other parts outside of the core section tend to be mostly single track, with some passing loops at few stops. The single track sections are to Sietoksnis, Maites Kombinat and Stropi. On these sections, headways tend to be around 30 minutes. However, line 4 between Stacia and Maites Kombinat is only operated once per hour. This is mostly due to the fact that there is interlining on the single track to Maises Kombinat. Actually, line 4 is fairly new and is a result of adding some switches at the stop Finspilzila. Also, the network has some imperfections like a curve that is slightly too tight to negotiate in a double track, leading to funny situations like these. And now let's continue on with the fleet. Even though there is no large fleet and the tram system is mostly operated with single cars, there is still a wide variety of tram types in Dogovpils. And most of these trams are rather unique within the European Union. Not only because up until recently they were fully relying on trolley poles rather than a pantograph, but also that the most of the trams are from manufacturers that are typically not active in EU countries. For example, Daugavpils is home to some KTM 5s, produced by the Ust-Katavski Carriage Works. They are definitely not unique in the sense that they are custom built or so. No, this is the most produced tram type in the world. 
but Dolgovpils is the only city in the EU that operates them. See, the KTM5, with nearly 15,000 trams produced, was never really meant for export out of the former USSR. But after Latvia declared independence and later joined the EU, it found itself in a whole different world, to say the least. Besides the KTM5, the second most produced tram type in the world is also active on the network of Dolgovpils, the Tatra T3. In this case it are second-hand trams, as they could be found on the tram network of Schwerin, in Germany, in the past. They are not used that often anymore after arrival of newer models, but are mostly operated during busier times, since they mostly operate in pairs. There is one single KTM 8 from Uskatav in Daugavpils, but it does not seem to be in use all that often. It was located less in line on the storage tracks of the depot. From 2014, the KTM 23, also built by Uskatavsky Carriage Works, joined the fleet. As the trams and dog of pills are having a variety of colors, these ones stand out the most. They were originally built for Russian cities, but ended up in dog of pills. All trams of this type have now a retrofitted pantograph, but some still have their trolley poles intact. Also from 2014, the KTM 31 of Uskastav joined. Originally built for St. Petersburg, they are generally only operated during peak hours. Hence, I got no footage of them during the weekend. And finally, we have the newest kit on the block. The City Star, built by PK Transportnia Systemi in Russia. These were delivered from 2019. And now let's see who are riding on these trams. As a rather small city, the total ridership of public transport in Dolgovpils is not as high as you may have become used to in the other videos in this series. For 2021, the ridership figures took a strong blow due to the pandemic and subsequent measures. In this year, annual ridership fell short of 3.5 million passengers for the tram. This is less than 9.5 thousand passengers for the whole system on the day. But of course, a real comparison should be made with pre-pandemic years. In these years, like 2019, annual ridership was 7.4 million passengers per year, and in 2018, even 7.8 million. On a daily basis, this would be above 20,000 passengers a day. This is typical for a line in larger cities, but we have to keep in mind that Dog of Pills itself is a smaller city, and frequencies are typically quite low, with Line 1 as the exception. So, what will the future bring for the Dog of Pills tram system? The recent renewals and a new section to Daugavpils Regional Hospital were not the only impressive ways the small city's tram system is improving. In fact, some more renewals are on their way, as well as a likely extension. The most outstanding project is to build an extension that will close the gap between Stropi and the depot at Butcherove Iela. This would also reshape Stropi's turning loop and will give the Stropi district multiple choices to reach their destination. Other improvements to the network are more incremental, or modernization works. One of which is adding a switch to connect the short section to Chetoksnitz to the direction of the railway station, allowing for a potential route to be formed there. Also, the design of the existing switches which connect the Chetoksnitz section to the main section will be moved closer to the actual curve. A couple of new trams are supposed to be constructed too. The four new trams will be single car, like most of the existing trams in Dolgovpils. Interesting of this is that they will be locally produced in Dolgovpils locomotive repair factory, with the help of Czech tram manufacturer Prago EMX. And with that I hope I gave you a nice overview over this rather unique little tram system. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, and if you would like to see more of my work in the future, please subscribe to my channel. It would really help me if you do that. And as always, thank you very much for watching.